Hello and welcome along to our Irish Greyhound Derby preview in association with Boyle Sports. I'm David Jennings from the Racing Post and I'm delighted to be joined by Irish Greyhound Racing Royalty. He can write about dogs, he can talk about dogs, he can commentate on dogs, but most of all, he can tell us which dog is going to run fastest. It's Mr Ian Fortune. How are you, Ian? Good to see you. I'm also joined by the su super shrewd Kevin Hennessy. Some people are calling you the next Dean Fortune. How do you um, like that? I would like to be associated with him. So oh, that's the way his waistline is going. <laughs> getting there, yeah. Let the banter begin. Before we get stuck into the action on Saturday night, we're going to have our quick fire questions for our two panelists. So, Ian, your question is Give me the trap draw containing the six best dogs that you've ever seen. Ever seen. Ever seen. So, trap one. Trap one. I was given like four minutes to look at this. Yeah, you know that. Right. Hardford Mick, more favourite, but a great dog. He knew where the winning line was. He had the heart of a lion, and he was a proper greyhound. He won the derby back in 91, I believe 91, OK. Uh, trap two? Premier Fantasy, the oh. daddy of them all. He could do it all. Start, stay, he was, he was a machine. Oh, he was, yeah, he'd be my favourite. Number three? We stuck Westmead Hawk in trap three. Oh, uh, we, had to put him in there. we had to put him in there for the English, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Esther didn't matter where he was drawn, he was going to be coming from off the pace anyway. Yeah, won two English derbies, enough said. OK, trap four? Four, I went with Spiral Nikita, one of the fastest we ever saw go down the back straight. He was an absolute machine. Trap five? Five, we went with College Causeway. Never forget the roar when he hit the second bend in that derby. He was still eight lengths off the pace, but wow, he got there. And uh, yeah, it was a special, special night, special commentary, special night, and uh, one I'll never forget. And finally, trap six. Well, under duress, I had to put Late Late Show in, you know. <laughs> I know, to be honest. Uh, fully enough, for all that he did and for all that he won, he's still to this day an underestimated ground. I think he was the perfect galloping machine. And the big question that everybody wants to know is, who wins it? Fantasy wins by about a, about a half length from uh, Late Late Show. What time? Or over over the current track, five fifty. Yeah. yeah. 26, 20, 22? No, 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 no. Track record's 29, 10. I'd say they'd do about... 28.92. Okay, so Premier Fantasy wins the best Greyhound Derby of all time. Kevin Hennessy, your question is, if I was to give you a blank cheque now to buy any young dog in the country, who would you buy? Well, I like having JT Yankee, obviously, in the kennel already, so I wouldn't need to buy him to bring him in. Uh, Champion Stakes winner already. I think next year, I think he'll be, he'll be the one they'll all have to beat. But if I was to pick one, and looking at the Puppy Derby card here for just tonight alone, um, a dog I'm really interested to see is Drive On Mike. Um, recently purchased by Pat Buckley from Waterford. He was doing 28.11 down in Waterford. His trial here wasn't blistering. A 28.80 run capable of much, much better. I, I, I can't wait to see him tonight. He's the one I'm most looking forward to seeing. So that's Drive On Mike. Drive On Mike. Drive On Mike, a dog to follow for viewers. So let's get stuck into the, to the action on Saturday night. What an Irish Greyhound Derby we have in store. Kevin Hennessy, the prices for the, for the Derby final. It's a really, really hot heat this year. Where has the money been going and who is Boyle Sports' worst loser at this stage? Well, by far, it's good news. Good news is the one we need to get beaten. If we get him beaten, it's going to be a good derby for us in the empty post book. Um, we suffered badly in the early rounds, just in the heat betting, uh, first and second round, lots of favourites winning. But good news is our bogey. Um, the money's coming for Bucko's dream. I thought that here, final night, Ian afterwards asked me a question. Who do I think the money is going to come from? We've seen it coming for Bucko's. He was six, sevens in places. He's now five to one with ourselves. And um, we've good, new good news at 13 to eight, 15 to eight, Sonic, five to one Bucko's, six to one Black Farn, 10 to one JT Jet, and 20 to one Hay Bound in one. But definitely Bucko's dream. Curly had a similar type dog here in our first year sponsoring the Derby um, with Log Hill Blake, out and gone. He'll lead. Um, even if he misses the break slightly, I still think he'll lead. However, they're, they're, they're catching him most weeks, but as we me said... Don't give away your selection uh, yet, now. We uh, want to keep viewers watching. Yeah, well, uh, on the top of the going, fast going, it was tough going here last week. I'm better going. He'll, he'll get home a bit stronger, but um, he's the one that we're seeing plenty of support this week for. Okay, dogs. Ian Fortune, I'm looking at the prices there. I seen the semi-finals last week. You've got good news in the last three rounds. It's done 29.49 twice and 29.59. There was no excuses for Sonic last week, was there? How is he going to reverse the form? No, last week was a strange night. Um... It was a very wet, sludgy track, and I think dogs that took a certain racing line were, were struggling with the, with, with, with the ground. I think Sonic stood up twice in the race. There's no question he, he's capable of going faster. We've seen him do 29-12 already in this year's derby, on top of the ground with a good start. There's no question he'd probably do the fastest time of all the finalists. It's a case of where he gets the run and where he turns. Um, I'd, I'd forgive that run. It was a derby semi-final, it's not a derby final. It's a much, much, much different beast. I'm sensing you think we're going to see a different Sonic this week. 
I, I do. That doesn't mean I, I necessarily think you'll reverse placings. Um, I think it's a, an interesting derby final. Like Kevin, I think Bucko Stream is guaranteed to go around in front. I'll take evens about that if you want to offer that. Um, but uh, it's If all, you were pricing uh, that up, <laughs> theoretically You're speaking. You're not getting evens anyway, I'll tell you that much. But two to seven. <laughs> yeah, I'd take that even. He's lightning early pace, hasn't he? He is unbelievable, yeah. He's absolutely incredible early speed. Like He, he harks back to Memories of cool performance or something yeah, like that? Yeah, cool performance. Um, the likes of Slip the Lark, who was collared in the line and you go back years, the likes of Yes Speedy and dogs like that. You know, a dog that could really set a, a blistering gallop and it's a case of if anything can get after him. I remember Mount Leader, um, the Mount Leader dog that uh, Tina Marina picked up, he was going six clear. So, you know, dogs like that can play a big part in the derby and it's all a case of what turns second to him. If you're on Bucko's mm. Dream, you're hoping for something, something mayhem. to run off the corner, mayhem. a bit of mayhem. <laughs> yeah. Them all to get up, but Bucko's Dream to be left 12 clear and even then you might only win three <laughs> or four, you know. Kevin, uh, the betting suggests it's a two dog race. Do you, Deep down, do you think it is a duo? Would you be Would you be shocked if either Good News or Sonic didn't win the no, derby? No, not at all. Um, there's six great dogs in it, and that's just not been the, the cliche. You've got JT Jet. This I'm is your chance yeah, to, to big up JT I'm Jet. I'm obviously going to be slightly slightly biased, but the, the dog's CV speaks for himself. Just go back to earlier this year, the Dundalk International, Good News and Jet lined up against each other. Both completely missed the break on the night, but Jet won it. He ran down Bubbly Bluebird, who was six or seven lengths in front of him, and they said that that wouldn't happen. So he still has the engine. Look, it wasn't an ideal uh, derby campaign thus far. It will be the best JT jet we've seen so far in the competition on Saturday night. Whether that's going to be good enough or not is debatable. But to answer your question, even taking jet aside, I think Bucko's dream has a massive, massive hand to play in this derby final. He's going to go around in front. He's going to be in front of the third bend, in my opinion. And even if we take the bumping out of it at the first bend, if they go down to the third bend and he's in front and there's one challenging just to cup his inside and one just on his outside and he cuts off, just say, for instance, good news, who we've seen a million times when a dog gets checked off inside will go outwards and bumps into maybe Sonic and that gives him an extra length. That could be the length that wins it. So Black Farron has done nothing wrong. A, a semi-finalist winner here last week. Strong as an ox. He's running so, so well. He's improving all the time. And hey bound. We saw Ostu Missile winning over in England this year at 25 to 1 and you probably would have got bigger if you wanted it on the night. So don't rule out any of these. It's a derby final. Anything can happen. But um, good news is definitely the one to beat. And for those of you that don't know, obviously Kevin's dad, Paul, trains JT Jet. So if you think he's been biased about JT Jet, he, he probably is. <laughs> yeah, Ian, um, we spoke about Bucko's dream is going to lead. Like you, from, from a punting perspective, punters watching this now, they probably want to know, what's your, when you're backing dogs, are you gen, usually want to back dogs that are going to lead at the first bend and hope for carnage in behind? Or do you like a horse to, or a dog even that's going to stay in the running and maybe make a late bait? Are you an early pace man or a stayer? It was funny enough, a combination of both. Um, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, it depends on the makeup of the race. I, I have a soft spot for the finishers, though. I was, yeah, always, so I. I was always told, you know, the legendary Brendan Matthews told me, I was only a, a child at the time, he always says, just try and be on the fastest greyhound. You know, it's worked okay for me. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Just try and be on the fastest greyhound. So it's, it's that time where, where I'm going to have to nail your colours to the mast. Uh, Kevin, you were given all six a chance there a minute ago, yeah. so I'm just going to ask you, to nominate your one, two, three, so a tricast for viewers on the Boilsports Irish Greyhound Derby final. Well, I'm hoping that Jet will cross the line in front. I um, want your head but, ruling but your heart. As a, as a punter, I'm going to go for good news. Um, I thought good news after the quarter final, the way the makeup was. Just going into the semi finals with so little inside seeds, he done nothing to put me off from here last week. Um, I did talk to Pat Kilfoyle up at the Dundalk International, and the one frustrating part was the dog can get highly strong, provided the jigs and reels and, and, and the crowd and the atmosphere and the roars don't get to him. I think he'll have too much um, on the inside for Haybound. I know Haybound does step right. Good news does step right often as well. I think he'll have too much on the inside for them too. I, I can see him clearing Haybound to the bend and I can see him turning very close. Just behind um, Bucko's dream. So two wins it. Two wins it two for second. me. Bucko's I think might just get second. Two five, yeah. And Jet to get third. Uh, two five four for Kevin Hennessy from Boyle Sports. Ian Fortune. Yeah, one, two, three. Uh, it pains me to agree with Kevin, but I think two good news might just get get first run on Sonic. Um, I think he'll get around Haybound, perhaps off the second bend. I don't think they'll clash. I think good news will step out wide enough for that. I think the likes of Black Farron and JT Jet could play a big part as regards Sonic. If one of them is upsides him or heads him, I think he'll struggle. But I'm going to go for good news. I go two six five. Two six five for Ian Fortune, and I'm a good news fan as well. So it's uh, plenty of good news Stay on the off panel. Good here. news <laughs> straight away. <laughs> plenty of good news on the panel uh, here today. Uh, now there's also a, a really good supporting card. It's live on RTE and some cracking races. Uh, Ian, you're banker of the night. You've done the card. You've been studying these races. When do the yeah. entries come out? Wednesday. 
Yeah, yeah, Wednesday. So yeah. you've had you've had two two full days to study the card. For viewers watching, what's the best bet on Saturday night? I think it's a very competitive card. They're not jumping out at me, but if I had to pick one, um, I saw the prices earlier in the week for the plate final. Come to pass was three to one. As we said, if the ground is top of the ground, nothing will lead this fellow. And I just think he might get home on the ground. Okay, so come to pass. Still three to one? I don't know, you'll have to ask them. Uh, Ian has got the three to one. Uh, Kevin Hennessy, your best bet on Great Hen Derby final night? Uh, Native Chimes in the five seven five. Um I just think he's 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 got plenty of early pace on his inside and his outside with drive on tip and Wolf's Jack, but he was so impressive in the Derby campaign. I, I just think he's very, very strong. I think he'll he'll relish it. I think they'll come back to him in front. I, I can see him turning third or just off the pace. I can see him picking up uh, either drive on tip or Wolf's Jack, whichever one leads down the back. Okay, so that's the easy bit done. There's your banker on Saturday night, but everybody wants to do a lucky 15 on Greyhound final night so basically lads I want you to nominate your lucky 15 for Saturday night so I want four from each of you who's the best prepared I think Ian you're the best prepared, best give, prepared us, give us yeah. your four, four. Uh, well, the aforementioned come to pass I've gone, I've gone with, yeah, I've gone with. Um, Toolmaker Obama in the A1 550 he's well housed in the fence it's the first time he's got the fence in Sheldon Park in a long time if he, if he does things right I think he'll beat a, a fairly, fairly moderate uh, field Calico Ranger stick a one in for the UK he's a dog that's going to be made for the 575 yard trip he was desperately lucky to get out of the Derby final or in the Derby in the first round but he's a dog with immense pace and um, his runs around Hove would suggest that and then Forrest Natalie another one that's technically British one she's actually owned by Kevin Hutton the trainer but she's over with Martin Lanny for an Oaks crack and she's in one of the heats of the Oaks at the latter end of the card so yeah I think she's a hell of a bit I think you're just looking for an invitation next year's English Greyhound Derby are you? Know. So two Two English and two Irish dogs for Ian Fortune in his lucky 15. Kevin Hennessy, your lucky 15 for Saturday night? Um, yeah, well, obviously, Nate Chimes is in there. I'm going to go, I don't really like going with sprints, but Alton Jett impressed me enough last week. Um, he was a superstar when on his day when he's when he's on song. He got a bit of trouble here last week, didn't really ping as well. So I think when, when if he starts on terms, I think he'll have too much in the sprint. I'm going to go for two of my own then. I'm going to take on Ian um, with his banker will come to pass. I'm going to go for JT Dutch, JT Jets brother. It's his swan song as well. Uh, very impressive here, winning in the semi final play last week, getting up late. I think the battle to the bend is going to be all important there on the inside. Um, whichever turns second between one and two, I think Ian's dog will lead, come to pass. But I just think um, if Dutch turns within three or four, I'd be pretty confident going down the back there, picking him up. And uh, lastly then, uh, JT Patriot. He's a bit of an enigma, and we all know that. Um, if he turns up on the night, I don't think there's a stare in the country in Ireland or England that can beat him. It just depends on what mood he is when he gets up. He was in the mood last week. He gave him, he was still 10 or 12 off the back straight. Last week, for the second time, he won as he liked going away. I think if he, I think if he just, if he wakes up on the right side of the bed, he'll he'll be the one to beat. Yeah, he's, okay, he's an enigma. Yeah. <laughs> So there you go. Hopefully it's going to be a good night for the JTs, for Kevin Hennessy and the Hennessy Kennels. So that's it from us, folks. My sincere thanks to Mr. Ian Fortune for, from Kevin Hennessy as well for their great insight into the Derby final night. What a night we have in store. I've been David Jennings from the Racing Post. Enjoy Saturday night.